Hello, I'm Jonas Rewinski and you're watching TVP World Talks, where every word matters. Now, the ongoing dispute between the European Union and China concerning electric vehicles is heating up. The European Commission has decided to impose additional tariffs on several manufacturers of EVs based in China. And that could be a big problem. Because these tariffs are serious, the European Union has a point, but there is also something else going on behind the scenes. So we're going to be examining this issue with our guest today, Alicia Garcia Herrero, Senior Fellow at Bruegel. Hello and welcome to TVP World. Very nice to be with you. So first, let's begin with the basics. Just how serious will this impact be when it comes to companies either based in China or having parts of the manufacturing supply chains based uh, in China? What is going to happen now in this regard to these companies in terms of sheer numbers when it comes to these tariffs? Well, let me start by saying that the tariffs uh, may look large for European standards, but actually aren't compared to the US, Canada, even Turkey has 40% tariffs unless you invest in China and produce cars in China. So, you know, this is not new for China. Also bear in mind that um, auto produ electric vehicle producers in China have no margin. Uh, prices are around 10,000 US dollar per car average and when sold in the European Union it's about 20,000 uh, US dollar uh, equivalent. This means that uh, Chinese producers can uh, take the tariffs. That's no doubt as long as they are uh, you know the best in in the game BYD if you are maybe state owned producer uh, you'll, ha you'll have a harder time because your cost of operation is higher. What I'm trying to say here is that it is not clear that the European consumer will pay for these tariffs. It might well be that it just reduces the margin of these uh, EV makers, EV producers uh, in China. So in this dispute, is it even possible to say who is right? I mean, China says it's protectionism. The European Union says, hold on, you've got such massive manufacturing capacities and you're manufacturing these vehicles at a discount price that you basically are slowly but inevitably killing off our very own manufacturers. So we have to step in in order to prevent that from happening. Uh, can you say... Who is actually right in this particular confrontation over numbers, but also over, you know, jobs, over uh, prospects for development? Because this clearly is a serious issue. Well, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm on the European side on, on this one, and I will tell you why. I, uh, although not everybody agrees in Europe, but I do agree with the Commission on this one for a very simple reason. And it's that China's market has never been fully opened. We need to realize that. Uh, cars, in particular uh, combustion engine cars, uh, are actually among the most open sectors in China. Some are totally closed. If you try telecom, try tourism, try it's, it's very hard. And China opened to the, to the uh, auto sector to really to move up the ladder, to learn from Tesla, from Volkswagen, from others. But, you know, they, they, they made a tiny space for them in the sense that they they either uh, obliged them to have JVs at the very beginning, and then when they allowed them to be independent, uh, independently based in China, you know, suppliers, BYD in particular, many others kind of learned their way. They, they were forced to localize, forced to localize, meaning accept Chinese suppliers that, rather than European suppliers. So that ecosystem was created very smartly, but very painfully for Europe in the future. So now it is done and lots of subsidies went into there. Nobody denies that China did improve in terms of, you know, uh, productivity of the sector and in, you name it, uh, innovation. But the reality is that there were first a force or induced tech transfer, I would put it this way, and that the sector was not fully open. So the competition was not fully fair and therefore it is hard to argue that we need to offer fully fair competition as well i mean that's that's what it is it, it doesn't go with our principles our you know free trade principles i i get it but by now china size is so large that the impact on the european economy is just too massive to be to be 
to be forgotten. So the, the tariffs won't solve our problems. Let me end by saying this. They will just uh, minimally, I would say, reduce the pain for us to react, to become more competitive. That's that's really what we need to do. And therefore, they, they're just like a little, you know, uh, uh, a little, little thing solving our problem for a little time. That's all what it is. And what is the risk of China retaliating? Uh, the Chinese officials have already said, well, if you're actually going to impose these tariffs, we're going to look into a couple of other sectors uh, where European products are being imported you know, into China. And we might be looking at basically imposing uh, something similar there. Um, to what extent do you think the European Union is likely to be worried about this kind of reaction from Beijing? So first of all, uh, it is happening. We already had uh, cognac brandy, uh, so basically affecting France. The threat uh, before the negotiations and during the negotiations, which just ended, uh, as you said, in tears, nothing has happened, uh, was on, on a bigger ticket for Europe, which is uh, high engine, uh, combustion engine vehicles imported into China. That's big uh, for the whole of Europe. And um, they might go ahead because the European market, believe it or not, is very important for China. I, we, we kind of don't realize uh, how important it is because, you know, we feel our economies are not doing well. But because the U.S. is basically close to China by now, I mean, in many, many sectors, EVs in particular, 100 percent tariffs. There's, I think, only 11 billion in imports in EVs from, you know, from the U.S. Uh, from China into the U.S. So it's very small, um, and other economies are not ready for EVs, yeah, because they don't have enough electrification. You name it. So we are 55 percent of the EV market for China. So it is huge, and therefore they they are worried and they will retaliate. Now, the more we worry about retaliation, the more they will retaliate. That's the way it is. So, you know, we, we need to basically realize that that um, if it, the more we worry, the more costly this move will be. So so we just have to, to stick together and figure out um, what else we can do, because we also have means of retaliation. We have other um, investigations open on wind farm on, on uh, wind farms, on legacy chips. Uh, in international procurement, we have many other cases ongoing. This is only one of them. So, uh, speaking basically of sticking together, I'm glad that you actually raised the issue. There are two countries in particular which say we're not on board with this. And they are doing this for very different reasons. Uh, can you explain this particular uh, situation there? Because there is some very interesting dynamics going on behind the scenes. Well, I'm not sure which two countries you're speaking about, because I can think of more than two. We could talk about Hungary, we could talk about Germany, we could talk even about Spain in uh, in, in some way. So, you know, uh, if you tell me which Hungary countries... and Germany specifically, because they are two countries which are doing this for very different reasons, right? Yes. Okay, so for Hungary, I just can't understand uh, why we give hung Hungary the leverage to do what Hungary does. I just don't get it as a European, uh, because Hungary's reasoning is absolutely detrimental on Europe. It, it's, it's really about um, a different uh, political and ideological model by now. So, you know, this is beyond the tariffs. This is not about the tariffs. And the tariffs are just an instrument for Hungary to show its uh, intent with China and with Russia indirectly. Uh, so that's, I would say, beyond my paycheck, meaning, I mean, I just think that we we just have to possibly even, you know, if, if needed, change our treaty, do something really big about this, because if not, others will, will follow if needed, yeah, if, if um, depending on their political situation in the future. So it's very, very risky. Of course, it's like, you know, Viktor Orban's rogue diplomacy. But what about Germany? Because apparently German manufacturers believe they are losing okay. out more through the imposition of these tariffs than through the oh. presence of Chinese EVs in Europe. Why is that so? I, I, I can't agree more. So I just came back from Delhi. Uh, actually, there was a, 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 a Schultz a Modi summit, and I was there for that reason. 
uh, with the in uh, with the industrial German Industrial Association. So you can tell from these big moves uh, that Germany is trying to find alternatives. I think what is happening with Germany is that this country feels trapped in a model that hasn't worked, whether it's because of you know cheap energy no longer being possible or because of um, basically foreign direct investment into China as a way to strengthen its industrial sector. What has happened is that neither has Germany any cheap energy anymore, nor does it have uh, improved its industrial capacity thanks to China, because what has happened is that China has carved out uh, investment in Germany towards investment into China. You can think about BASF, uh, 10 billion in Guangdong's chemical, uh, new chemical plant, uh, Volkswagen, you name it. So I think Germany is fully, re is painfully realizing that this is happening, but they are still captured because they cannot deal with these two big issues cost of energy and losing the Chinese market at the same time. And I think what the government is doing, um, I would say not the full government, I would say Schultz in particular, is in my view, I'm going to use a strong word, a little bit of a, a coward me, uh, move because he is, for the sake of not losing those profits from China, losing more in Germany itself. So this is a very interesting story. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. We'll be coming back to it later on. Alicia um, uh, Garcia Herrera was our guest today here on TVP World. Thank you very much for joining us and for sharing your insight. Thank you. And I'm Ilasha Lewinsky. Please do stay with us here on TVP World.